Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back to the Drofus Demonarch series. My name is Chris Rizel. I'm joined today by my colleague Jasper Wong. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the, the Demonar. So today's Demonar is about our dynamic graphical user interface, or DIM GUI, as we call it for short. This is where you can create custom properties in the software that show up instantly in the interface. They can also be synced with models, uh, plus they're available for reporting, hence the name Dynamic. Um, Jasper will go into the details in just a second, but there was also a user group a few weeks ago in Sydney about this very subject. It was recorded and is available on YouTube, so definitely worth a watch if you'd like to find out even more. Um, normally these webinars come in around the 15 minute mark. We might be one or two minutes longer today. Uh, so without further ado, I'll hand over to Jasper. Thanks, Chris. Um, just let me. Yes, so for today's demo, um, the key takeaways, are, you know, DIM GUI gives you the flexibility to add group and layout fields to collect any data you need on your project. All the data fields are not tied to Drawfer software versions and can be linked with models to push or accept data, respecting the data type, you know, such as numbers or text. You as our users would know once the data values is in Drawfer's, it can be produced in the reports. Our agenda for this afternoon um, is to show and tell what DIM GUI is, why it is used, and how to use it, using examples from the room modules, item modules, and occurrence modules. So what is DIM GUI? DIM GUI is a function that allows database administrators to add organized fields to the software interface. In other words, making Drawfers flexible. Of course, we do have our default fields. Fields can be added at any time during the project. For clarity amongst all the stakeholders, we will recommend that the fields are created as early on in the project as possible. It will be minor additions uh, of the fields during the project. For non-database administrators who are in this demo or watching this, it is beneficial to know what DIM GUI is, so you know what to ask for when you need your database admin to create new fields in your project. For database administrators, this demo uh, will provide you a starting point to discover the flexibility of Drawfers through this interface. You are probably using DIM GUI, but probably don't realize it. Uh, the fields are for are in typically uh, found in room data in the rooms and the templates modules. Item data. Occurrence modules and others as well. For all projects, collecting data collaboratively is important for consistency and having every stakeholders relying on the same information. Equally, it is also important to be able to export information for various deliverables that has different information selected from the database. And here we've got a small selection of information exports that can be created from Drawfers. So how does DIM GUI help your use of Drawfers? We will go through two scenarios. The first one, it's a project that's not using Drawfers, and the information is stored either in the native model format, Excel files, or PDF. The data can be coordinated, but they remain in different buckets, or we call it siloed data. It requires effort to consolidate all the different silos of data into a structure that can be utilized by all the project participants. The second scenario is where all the non-geometric information is stored in Drawfers and synced to the model. The stored data follows a schema, which means that data is stored in a structured manner, making, it, making the information easier to understand. Without doing a poll, I presume the second option is preferable amongst the audience. So the outcome for, the dem to, for, for today's demo uh, is to show you how to set up the user interface to collect the data you need, 
And when you create a report such as a room data sheet, the layout in the PDF is the same as that in the user interface of within the software. We will use a simple object, a roller blind, which is which I use on many projects these days to illustrate how Dean GUI can be set up and used to add briefing requirements to a room, record its specific details, and also collect some instance information from the Revit model. And this instance information can be used for procurement activities. To access the Dean GUI, you will need database administrator permission. This provides you with the dynamic GUI options and also the project and database administration options. For this demo now, with the DIM GUI, we will be using the room data, items data, and occurrence window panel. From the project and database administration, we will be using the room data view filter and items type filter. For the first demo, Let's say you are in a meeting establishing some window dressing requirements for an office fit out, and you need to create additional fields to record the requirements. These fields will have a tick box to activate the text field or and a drop down menu. These two new fields will sorry, these two new fields will have a drop down option for roller blind types and operators. We want to put these new fields at the bottom of the window group. Browsing to the room data panel and Dean GUI settings, the easiest method to create these new fields is to duplicate from current ones. And we're going to use this method for the first requirement. After duplicating, we will update the field names. We will also check the enable disable function that's link the, linking the checkbox to the drop down field. Lastly, we will update the drop down options. You can always test what you're building by saving and refreshing. The bottom window will show the UI and you can test within the environment. We will set up the second requirement from scratch, where we will create an element level object and select the tick box and drop down field. We'll name this, set up the enable disable function, linking the drop, drop down field with a checkbox. Lastly, we'll provide the roller blind operator options for the end user. When we finish, we'll save and close the window. The next step is to assign the fields to view filter. You need to assign all you need to assign to all view filter for it to show in Drawfirst web and also to the arch view filter for architects to see those fields. After reloading the environment and going into the room modules, the two new fields are available for the project team to input client's requirements. And of course, if there are other types of dressings or operators required, the administrator can go back into the Dean GUI editor and add more uh, to the drop down options. If that demo was a bit quick for you, we'll take you through the Dean GUI editor, which is what we have on screen. The top left panel is a browser showing the structure of the user interface. The top right panel displays the properties of the selected objects in the browser. The bottom panel shows the layout of uh, flag, which is what we call in draw first terms, uh, you might call it tag, uh, and that shows the layout of the entire flag. And here we will show how the different levels in the Dean GUI editor are displayed in the software. At the highest level, we have the flag. Next is the group, then the element, and the field, which is where you input your data. As a note, room and items modules are displayed in the room data and item data respectively. For occurrence, the DIM GUI is displayed in the occurrence properties windows. And we also have a number of out of the box fields under general product and connections. We will share this and the previous two slides for your easy reference in our follow up email. Now that we have created the fields and collected some data, the next step is to produce a report, in this case, a room data sheet. This is to demonstrate that for the different flags, you can create a PDF with the same, out, same layout as a user interface. In this example we have here, the image shows 
the tree column in the user interface and a tree column in the uh, exporter reports. For this next demo, we will be showing how the flag setting changes the layout of the PDF report. This setting controls how the flags will display in the exported report. Also worth noting is I'm using the new rooms detail reports in this demo. The left hand side of the video would show the software and the PDF outputs. The right hand side shows the settings we are using at the flag level, so you see side by side. For demonstration purposes, I will only be exporting the doors and windows flag. For the first report, we'll be using the flag setting. The flag setting will lay out the group down the page, meaning one group below the next, meaning it looks different from the Drawfers user interface. For the second report, as the fields are organized in two columns, we will be using the two column flag setting. Just noting, whenever you change a setting, we will suggest to clear the cache and reload the environment to get the latest changes. We'll now recreate the report. And as you can see, the report is now showing a two column layout, which is similar to the user interface layout. So we have briefed up the roller blind requirements in a room. During the design phase, you have created a roller blind item in Drawfus. There are many fields available and only some are applicable for the roller blind. We will show you how to create an items view filters and select the fields required and assign the view filter to the Windows group. So we have a dummy item here. And as we cycle through the flags, we can see the these are all the fields that's available in the database. To specify windows and windows dressings, we will need a subset of this. We do this in the items type filter to create a new view, new view filter. You can also duplicate an existing view filter to use it as a starting point. Give the view filter a name and populate the right side of the uh, window with the fields you want to appear. When you've completed the uh, Selecting all the fields, save and close out of the dialog box. And you need to reload the environment. Back in the items module, we'll apply the new view filter to the Windows dressing group, meaning that all the items under the group will now have the same set of displayed data fields. And looking at the roller blind item, we can see a smaller subset of the fields required to be completed by the project team. This will help the team to focus on the necessary and required information uh, for this particular item. After specifying the roller blinds, the team have assigned it to the office space and would like to be able to record the sizes of each roller blind. We will set up fields for the occurrence to record the dimensions of these roller blinds. These are the fields that, and these are the fields that we will show how to set them, how they are set up. For this, we'll be going into the item occurrence window. The setup for the new fields are similar to the room and items dim GUI. As we are getting the blinds from the size of the blinds from the models. We will set up length, height, width, thickness fields as a numeric field. There are a few settings for this number field. First is to set the format in terms of the number of digits and decimal places. As the unit of the field will be in millimeters, we'll allow 10 digits and no decimal places. This, the 10 digits allows a large measurement in millimeters, and as there are no decimal place, uh, so no decimals within the millimeter unit, we will have a zero after the comma. We will also assign a unit to the numeric field from the drop down list that corresponds to the units in the model. During synchronization, if the units are different, the numerical numbers will be converted to the equivalent uh, units. For example, if we set the drawfers data type to of the length in meters, when we synchronize a uh, length of 3000 millimeters, the number will be converted to three meters. Uh, as a conversion. 
When we have finished setting up the fields, we'll save and return to the settings page. The next step is to assign the new fields to the view filter. For the occurrence deemed GUIs, we'll be assigning it within the items type filter. Where you will select the fields and push it to the right side of the window. Save any changes when you've completed. Browsing back to the occurrence properties, you can now see the fields when you select the roller blind occurrence. Hopefully you can start to see the pattern for what we are doing here today. To create new fields and then add the, view, uh, the new fields to the view filter and you can use it in your uh, project. Back to this workflow, the last step is to import the sizes from Revit into the Rufus. So within Revit, you will need to map the parameters and attributes. So the values flows from Revit to the Rufus. In this case, the three roller shutter blinds are the same size. So there's no need to split the occurrence within the Rufus. As the sizes are the same, they will have the same values. However, if the sizes are different, you will need to match each roller blinds in Revit to individual roller blind occurrences in the Rufus. Once the sync is complete, the length and height values are now in Drophus. The information is ready for sign off and for the procurement team to order the roller blinds for installation. So we have shown you many things about DIM GUI. It is what allows Drophus to be flexible and set up fields to collect any data or information for the project. The information can then be reproduced into WYSIWYG reports. We have now, we have also come to the end of the demo now. I hope you can see the power of Deem GUI for your project. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Jasper. That was really great. Um, so today's session was pretty jam packed. The key messages I'd like you to remember are fields can be added very quickly and easily. They, they can be included in reports, but they also don't have to be. Second one is reports can mirror the format in the interface, but as Jasper showed, maybe you want a different look and feel for the data entry to what you want in the reports, and, and that's certainly possible. If you're about to create an Excel on your desktop, stop and think about whether that data needs to be shared with others. And at least consider adding those fields to Drophus via the DIM GUI. Um, I know lots of customers who kick themselves for not doing that, but I've yet to meet any that regretted doing so. And most importantly, don't, don't suffer in silence. You know, if you need a field added, speak to the Drophus admin on your project, uh, and if need be, refer them back to this seminar. So Jasper, um, just in case anybody joined late or they want to share this with their colleagues, how can they find the recording? So the recording for this session will be posted onto the Drophus YouTube channel. Um, today we've collected all the demo videos into a playlist. And in particular for this session, uh, once it's uploaded, we will be sending out uh, an email notification. Fantastic. Um, so our next session will be in a few weeks time. Uh, invitations will be going out shortly. And if you've got any feedback, you know, please feel free to reach out to Jasper or any of the team. Thanks very much for joining us today, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks, everyone.